Hi, my name is Mark Henley, and this is Live at Five for a Thursday. It's actually an impromptu Live at Five. I hadn't really planned on doing one today because, well, the day's just been busy. It's been a, a strange week, a different kind of week. I'm in a different place. We're up in our in our in our little house in in the Panhandle of Texas, in Memphis, Texas, and um, and and we're here. For, I think I shared with you that we would be up here. Uh, we're here for a very special occasion today. Marks the 75th anniversary of the sinking of the USS Indianapolis. Uh, the Indianapolis, very briefly, I'll share the story. The Indianapolis was um, a ship that was designated to go on a secret mission, um, and their secret mission was to deliver the final two components of the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima that ultimately led to the beginning of the end of World War II. And after they delivered their their cargo, none of none of the folks on the ship knew what their cargo was, but after they delivered their cargo, um, on Jan July 31st, or July 30th, 1945, their, their ship was torpedoed, almost 1,200 men on board. Uh, their ship was torpedoed, and inside of 12 minutes, that ship went down. It sank. And there were 900 men who went into the water, 300 or so died upon impact of the torpedoes. And there were 900 men that went into the water. For about five nights and four days, they suffered through excruciatingly hot sunlight, exposure at night, shark attacks. Many uh, died from exposure. Many died from shark attacks. Many died from drinking the ocean water. And in the end, by pure accident, they were discovered in the, in the Pacific Ocean and rescued. My uncle, by marriage, Cletus Lebo, was one of those who uh, was a survivor. Um, he is one of eight survivors remaining today. He's the only Texas survivor uh, who remains alive. He's 96 years young. And today, uh, about two years ago, really... A process started to get the United States Congress to grant the, the Congressional Gold Medal to not just the survivors of the Indianapolis, but to everybody posthumously and, and those who are alive. And so today was the day that they would have, had it not been for COVID, they would have gone to Indianapolis and received their medal today. Uh, but we, we came for a ceremony that took place in the library of the, of the little city of Memphis, Texas. And we listened to speeches from uh, dignitaries in our government and, and uh, in the military services to talk about the bravery and the courage of those men who, who did what they needed to do to, to follow orders, to fulfill a mission, to make things and do, do the right thing uh, at the right time for the right reasons without really knowing what was behind it. And so I was struck today, and I thought, you know, I'm just gonna gonna do a, a little live at five today. Whether you see this one or not is okay. You very few are, are seeing it live. Some of you may see it later, and that's fine. I I, I really don't. My, whether people see these things or not is not the the key for me. It's it's that I I follow through on a commitment to myself and to others to share information that I think might be helpful. So today, when I was sitting in, in, that, um, in that meeting, in that ceremony, I was struck by what it means to do the right thing. And um, it, does, it, it does many, many things. You probably could add to this, and I hope that you will add to this, what, what doing the right thing means. But these guys were on, on orders. They, they, they were in the military. They followed orders. They carried them out without asking. I do know that that on the way from from California to Tinian Island, that the captain talked with the person who was accompanying the package, the secret package, and he was fishing for information. And in that fishing for information, he thought it might be some sort of medical uh, cargo. And the information that he got was that it's a very important cargo. And the Captain McVeigh said, 
then we will do everything we can to get it there safely. And they did. They did the right thing without knowing what, what was behind it. They did the right thing because it was the right thing to do. And my thought on that is this. So very often today, when we're faced with questions about or requests to do the right thing, we often question that request. Whether that's an overt request or a subtle request, whether it's a situational request that demands of us that we stand up, stand for, speak out, follow through, carry on, move forward, we often ask, what's in it for me? What's the payoff? What does doing the right thing get me? And, and I look back at these, these eight who are representative of, a, of a, the greatest generation, representative, final representatives of, of an era, a time in history that had they not done the right thing, simply because it was the right thing to do, our world would have been a much different place. I'm not saying it would have been better or worse. I'm just saying it would have been different. And my guess is it probably would not have been the kind of world that you and I are used to or would like to live in. I'm just guessing. I don't know that. So here's, the, here's the, the, my thought today. We do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Period without question, without worry about what's in it for me or what might happen as a result of me doing the right thing. We do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Think about that, won't you? Doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. What a novel idea. I recall that about 12 years ago, um, I guess it has been about 12 years ago, I had the privilege of traveling to Indianapolis with my aunt and uncle and speaking uh, in, in one of the out sessions to all of the survivors who were alive at that time. And there were about 30, 35 of those men at that time. And I remember looking at them and being so awestruck that they had not only survived those days and nights in the ocean, fighting off sharks and starvation and madness brought on by what they were experienced, but when they came back, they, they set about using their personal resilience and resolve to live lives that were bent on, do, to the best of their ability, doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. So I was inspired by that, and I still am. I believe that part of the reason those men continued to live well into their 90s and be vital uh, contributors to society and to their communities is because they had the courage to, to do the right thing in the water, um, when they were on the ship, they had the courage to do the right thing to help each other. When they were um, in the elements, they had the courage to continue to do the right thing with their families and with their friends and with their communities, their churches, their organizations, their places of work through all of their lives. And they leave behind a legacy that I believe we need to begin to live up to, perhaps better than we've ever ever been before in, in the past. So um, now I'm off my I'm off my soapbox. I just was so moved today by the notion that doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do has to be the way that we begin to live our lives. If we start doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, we'll start sitting down and listening to one another's ideas without calling each other names and, and creating chaos and violence and rancor and anger. If we start doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, we'll start taking care of one another and caring for one another. If we start doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, we will make our country and this world a better place. It doesn't matter which side of the aisle or the fence you're on, or if you're sitting on the fence, if we'll start doing the right thing. And folks, we know what the right things to do are. Nobody needs to tell us. We need to begin to listen to our hearts and do those right things, regardless of what it does to anybody else. But if we will start doing that, I'm not a prophet. I can't guarantee, I can't predict, and I, I, I will never do that. But if we start doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, folks, I really believe we can change the world. And we need that right now. So thank you for joining my impromptu Live at Five about doing the right thing. My intent is to finish out the week tomorrow with one more. But I leave you with uh, greetings of peace and prosperity 
and happiness uh, and wellness. You take care. Thank you.